Hello everyone, we are back. It has been a while and I can only apologise. Uh, work got a tad bit insane um, and I fully intended to film whilst I was away and then I just wasn't organised enough. So, <laughs> so, outing myself because, you know, why not? Um, so I do apologise, but enough of that. Let's get into it. So when it comes to being a professional, we all know that you have to be a really good player, okay? That's that's the given baseline that we're working off. But then somebody will say something cryptic, like, well, as we know, being a good player is only 30% of the job, and you're like... What do you mean? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? So here are my 10 things that make you a better musician that have absolutely nothing to do with playing your instruments. The first and possibly greatest one is to be nice. <laughs> this is not rocket science, but you will be amazed at how many people, particularly at the music college stage of things, think that appearing above everyone else is a good thing, and it is not. The entire basis of this industry is built on depping, getting people in, word of mouth and reputation. And if you get a reputation for not exactly being the nicest, this is not gonna, this is not gonna go well for you. And uh, number two is to remember to put all your jewelry on before you start filming. Number two is to be on time. There is really no excuse for being late. Obviously things can happen. Extenuating circumstances aside, you have to be on time. And by on time, I mean 10 minutes before the start time. Everyone will be milling around and getting themselves set up on stage. If you arrive, say the rehearsal is at two o'clock and you arrive at two o'clock, you will be late. Everyone is on stage and baton comes down at two o'clock. And then even more so if you are recording, because if you're late, they're just not gonna let you in. <laughs> um, and then you will never get hard again. So be on time. Number three is to be prepared. Now I do not mean practicing because again, playing your instrument, not what this video is about. I mean bringing things like pencils, a rubber, a pencil sharpener, any spare strings and all that kind of thing that you might need to have with you. Making sure that you have all your leads and amps and cables and all that kind of thing that you might need. Just not a good look if your desk partner turns to you and says, hey, have you got a pencil? And you say no. Number four is to better your knowledge. If you're in a rehearsal and somebody says something and you're like, I have no idea what that means, then try and do your best to learn it. For example, at the moment, I am learning more about harmonics because it's an area that I don't really know a huge amount about, to be fair. They are notated in so many different ways and it can be really, really, really tricky. So I'm gonna do my best to learn that just an example for me. But if there's something, say you need to know what all the different modes are and you're not totally, totally confident, then just learn it. It won't take you long and it will massively improve your musicianship. Number five kind of ties into number one, but it's just to have a good attitude. Now, we all love a good moan. We all love a good complaint. Do not get me wrong. And obviously when you're around friends, then, you know, go for it. Try not to immediately start slagging something off as soon as the rehearsal's finished. It's not a good look. And it doesn't reflect well on you specifically. So just try and be professional, be pleasant. And if you've enjoyed something, say, that's something which I've really, really tried to make an effort to do recently because I love my job. I love what I do. And a lot of the time you can finish rehearsals and people will immediately switch into, oh, I can't believe we're playing that. Oh, the conductor wasn't very clear or blah, 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 whatever. And it can be so easy to get sucked into that when you actually maybe don't agree. Maybe you really like the piece that you're playing. And now, you don't need to be annoying about it. But if you really enjoyed something, then feel free to say it. You can really change the energy in a room. My next thing is to just get physically active. And obviously that's on a sliding scale and that's all things considered. But when you can, look after your body. It's really hard to do in this industry, especially when you're traveling a lot, it can be difficult to, you know, eat well and all these kinds of things and to keep up with exercise. But even if it's something as simple as taking the dogs <laughs> for a walk, or, you know, if you can get to a gym, go for a run, just look after yourself. What we do is phenomenally physical. And I am now starting to see so many musicians that are having to stop because they can't physically do their job anymore. And that is just 
heartbreaking to me. So physically, look after yourself. We're playing the long game here. It's gonna be so, so worth it. Number seven is something that I actually really, really want to work on, I guess. It's a little bit tricky where I live because there aren't any concert halls or venues super close, but it's to go to more concerts and gigs and shows and learn by watching. You learn so much this way and just surrounding yourself by other musicians, I find it hugely inspiring, hugely instructive, and it can also really just help you generally to be listening to a piece in the context in which it was made to be heard rather than in the orchestra somewhere or in the band whatever it can really really change your perspective on it and can massively massively help Number eight is to ask for advice. This is something which I took a long time to get comfortable with. Certain individuals <laughs> had made me feel slightly silly for asking questions and that reflected on them, not on me as I came to learn. People love to be asked what they think. They love to be asked their opinion on things. And so use that, ask. If you don't know something, ask. If you want to find out more about a particular side of the industry, go and find the people that are working in those areas and ask them. Social media is phenomenal for this. We have never had such easy access to people. Obviously, be polite, be respectful, compose your messages in a slightly more formal way when you first start speaking to somebody. That can really, really help you. And you will get some absolutely gold information this way. I always say on my videos that everyone, you're so welcome. Message me on Instagram, send me an email. All the information is in the description box below. And I will always get back to you. I'm here to help. It's literally why I made this channel in the first place. And there are so many other people who will be absolutely delighted to answer your questions. And then number nine is to learn to listen. And this is something which sounds ridiculously obvious. I give you that, hands up admit. But you will be amazed at how many musicians don't practice this skill. Do you remember all of those oral listening tests that you did as part of your exams? It's time to revisit them, my friend. Being able to pick out different lines in the music, different harmonies, start learning what different keys sound like. That one is super, super helpful. And then finally, number 10 is to learn to observe. <laughs> And this is something which sounds kind of strange because it's basically people watch. Just watch what everyone is doing around you. You can learn so much just through watching how different people interact with each other, what's the etiquette. For example, I was chatting to a friend of mine who's a cellist. Bear in mind, she is she won't mind me saying, significantly older than I am, has been in this industry for a fair few years. And she said that she learned the other day that if you are in a flute section, it is bad etiquette to have your stand higher than the first flautist. Who knew? Who knew that? I mean, probably all the flute players are like, yeah, duh. But you know, it's stuff like that. And she learned that just by watching a bit of an interaction that was going on. So it's never too late to be learning these things. So people watch. It is absolutely fascinating. And those are my 10 things that will help you that have absolutely nothing to do with playing your instrument. If you have anything that you would like to add, then please do comment them down below. I try to keep this to 10 because otherwise, you know, it can get tricky. I would love to hear from you guys. As ever, please do like this video and subscribe to my channel if you have enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.